Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Solar and Storage Market Series. My name is Erez Dolev, and I'm the Managing Director here at Renvu. Today, we're going to be hearing from uh, the Grower team, uh, Dave Dean, Product Marketing Manager, uh, Tyler, like, Tyler Young, a North American Marketing Manager, uh, Ryan Gravel, the Senior uh, Service Manager, and Fermin uh, Carrillo Tovar, a Field Application Engineer, about their off-grid and hybrid inverters and batteries and have a live uh, commissioning of the MIN hybrid inverters. Uh, but before we dive in, and while we're waiting for more people to join, I'd like to give a little background on Renvu, as well as some of the products and services we offer. Renvu is a US-based solar equipment distributor. We've been in the industry since 2012, and we currently have uh, fulfillment uh, facilities in California, New Jersey, and Texas. Our sales staff all have background within engineering and solar installation. A few products quickly to spotlight here. We carry the whole solar portfolio and can beat any price you see out there. Uh, we recently had a webinar with Lumin smart panels and carry their outdoors and indoors models on the shelf. This is a great device to add uh, to a solar and storage project uh, since it allows you to use uh, the existing main and sub panels and control the loads remotely during power outage or set rules for which loads will continue to work and which ones will be dropped. Uh, we have plenty of Zenshine 405 black modules, which we are offering at 16 cents when you're buying them with the Bleakier car ports. Uh, we have the whole portfolio of Enphase IQ8 series and offering the IQ8H at 25% below the market price right now. So. Uh, check in with us if you are using those. Uh, Growout released their EV chargers, uh, Thors, uh, which all uh, UL certified and have 50 amps uh, output. We are also adding Growout pre-phase hybrid inverters option now. So let us know if uh, you have any project that can use those. Um, and if you are looking for tea gaskets to make solar arrays watertight, Leakier has several options uh, for different models. Uh, to uh, to seal the gaps. Uh, email us at info at renwood.com if you uh, or see our webinar uh, follow up email with more info on those. Um, here's our bulk module price list for la large volume options and our upcoming uh, offerings of solar modules. We carry Zenshine, Canadian Solar, Hyundai, Hyperion, REC, and more. All our uh, brands are Bloomberg Tier One. Uh, we are sharing in the chat now a link to this page. Uh, we update it regularly so you can stay up to date with our latest deals for bulk orders. Uh, I'll take a minute to also mention the Bleakier residential carport. This is a great way to expand existing solar systems or an alternative solution where you cannot install solar on a roof and when customer is looking uh, for more uh, added values. Uh, like uh, protecting their cars, shading, uh, it can be a patio, um, canopy. Uh, it is designed to be assembled by a small uh, crew. It doesn't require any specialized or heavy machinery to install. This is a solar structure, so it's eligible for the 30% ITC and possibly also the extra 10% for US-made products. It is, uh, it is modules and inverters agnostic. It is designed and fabricated in the U.S. and made from U.S. sourced galvanized steel and comes with 25 years warranty. Uh, the structure is coming with a structural engineer P stamp and you can install up to 24 solar modules with four columns of six, six modules. A two-car carport will generate about 10 kilowatt uh, um, of power. You can use residential and commercial modules with it with load capacities of up to 48 pounds per square foot snow, 215 miles per hour wind load, and seismic design category S. Uh, one last item to go over before we start uh, is our solar design and quote tool. You'll find it at the top of our homepage on renvu.com. You can generate as many quotes as you need in a couple of minutes without the need to wait for a sales engineer and it's available 24 seven always updated with the latest products and pricing. First, you select the components you'd like to see on your uh, quote, then choose your panel. I chose the Zenshine 405 Black. 
Then you configure the racking system from a wide range of options, tilted, flat roof, ground mount, and carports. I created array. Uh, first array with uh, two rows. Uh, first row will be with seven modules in uh, landscape. And then the second row, I'll put uh, 10 modules in portrait. The second array with another row of 10 modules in portrait. I'll change the rails to black and black clumps as well. And then the span to six feet. Uh, the system creates a sketch of the arrays with the dimensions, so you can verify that uh, this design fits to the space you have. Uh, then choose your inverter type from microinverters, optimizers, and string inverters. I'm selecting string inverters and storage option. I'll select the string phase, uh, single phase, and then grow up. Select the MIN 10K here, and I'll select the 19.8 kilowatt hour arrow. Um, and I go uh, optimizers. On the left side, you see the bill of materials building up. And when you are uh, logged into your account, prices change as you edit your system configuration. This is a great way uh, to compare the cost of different options uh, in real time. Uh, our team updates it uh, regularly. On this page, you can uh, you can see already the bill of material and pricing. And when you generate a quote, it will send it to your email and um, and will uh, also uh, add it to your uh, My Account where you can edit the uh, quote, print it, or place your order. Um, I encourage you to take a moment and play around with it. It's uh, interesting to compare uh, options and uh, contemplate different design configurations. Uh, if you have any questions about these products or about GrowAt while the GrowAt team is uh, presenting, please feel free to ask uh, in the Q&A section and we will get to, uh, to the questions at the end of the webinar during the Q&A uh, session. You can also email our sales team at info at .com for more information and pricing. Uh, the webinar is being recorded and we'll send you a link uh, in follow-up email. We also have recordings of previous webinars on the Renvu YouTube channel. Uh, without further ado, I will uh, hand it over to the grower team here. Stop sharing. Thanks a bunch. Much appreciated, Eris. Um, and I just wanted to start off by saying that Renvu's uh, system design software is amazing and lovely. It, it's, it's awesome that, because a lot of them are like, oh, you can see that this particular device is compatible with this other device. But yours has real-time pricing and things like this. Very simple thing to go through. Um, so yeah, love that on your website. Um, so yeah. I'll go ahead and get started with uh, the GrowWatt portion of the presentation here. Um, my name is Tyler Young, the North American Marketing Manager. Uh, also on our team, we have uh, David Dean presenting right behind me. He's the North American Product Marketing Manager. And then we have uh, Ryan Gravel presenting after him, uh, who is the uh, Support Director, and uh, Furman as well from the Field Application Engineer team. He's here and going to help with any technical questions you guys have. Uh, so let's get started. I just want to go through uh, my background here. I'm currently in our testing lab and facility warehouse in Los Angeles, California. You can see some of our products around. This is our newly launched SPH uh, hybrid unit here. Dave is going to be talking about this one. Uh, back here, we have the, our EV charger that Renvu is currently selling as well. And then off on this side, we have our residential system. This is the SYN transfer switch, the MIN inverter right there. And below it, we have both our ARO battery, which Renvu currently has in stock, and then our new APX battery as well. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and do a bit of an overview of our 2024 product lineup. Then after that, I will do a live commissioning of our residential MIN inverter. So you guys should be able to see my screen now. Let's get the slideshow going. 
Now we see also, oh yeah, now we see it. Okay, there we go. Smart energy storage solutions from GrowWatt. 2024 product line for the US market. Uh, GrowWatt's overall business focus, uh, we have four primary categories. PV inverters, energy storage, EV chargers, and smart energy management. GrowWatt as a company has had sustainable growth over the last decade plus that we've been in business. Uh, we have over 1.9 million cloud users and a 3.1 million annual inverter production capacity at our manufacturing plant in China. And we are in 180 countries across, across the world. We have more than 5,000 employees, more than 1,000 engineers, and nearly 5% of our revenue is reinvested in R&D. This is our manufacturing center. Uh, again, also 3.1 million inverter capacity. But in addition to that, we're producing battery packs, uh, 400,000 per year as well. And we recently opened a new manufacturing center in Vietnam that's just this year. Our global presence, again, 180 countries. Uh, we are the largest residential inverter supplier in the world and top four PV inverter supplier as well. This is our uh, team, team members in the United States. As you can see, we have field application engineer uh, like Fermin, who we have on the call here. Uh, we also have sales, uh, product managers like Dave, and of course support, which Ryan will cover. Number one, residential inverter supplier, top four PV supplier. Again, in business for more than a decade, founded in Shenzhen, China, uh, launched our residential energy storage solution in 2015. Came to the US very soon after. And our goal overall is to build the world's largest intelligent, sustainable energy ecosystem for humankind. So a bit of background on all of our products for the 2024 lineup. Uh, of course, we do all of the usual suspects. Uh, grid tie, partial home backup, whole home backup, and off-grid for time of use or anything like that nature. Our MIN inverter is a streamlined design. Uh, we have multiple power ratings from 3.5 to 11.4 kilowatts. Um, they're very lightweight. Installers like them, very easy to install in roughly 15 minutes, uh, sometimes less even. And the commissioning takes about 15 minutes as well. They're dustproof, waterproof, outdoor rating with a 10-year warranty. And of course, the MIN does whole home and partial home backup as well. Uh, 50 volt minimum startup voltage and four MPPTs uh, for diverse roofs. Uh, our MIN series has rapid shutdown with TIGO inside and a 2.0 DC to AC ratio. So you can have 20 kilowatts of solar coming in, 10 of that can go to the battery and the other 10 can go to the grid. And that allows you to, to go past the inverter sort of rated capacity, uh, which is amazing. Uh, again, this is our brand new APX battery, uh, anywhere between five to 30 kilowatt hours. So it's completely scalable. Uh, wide temperature range, IP66 design again. They're stackable. Uh, they also can be wall mounted. And you can mix old and new battery packs, which is great. There's a smart software, which basically optimizes the balance between them. So there's no pre-charging or anything that you'd need to do for, for any of our battery products, which is great. Um, this is our ATS uh, for partial home backup. Again, 10-year warranty, NEMA 4X rating, dustproof, waterproof, uh, so it's outdoor rated. Same with our SYN, our whole home backup solution, and includes a 200 amp breaker for whole home uh, adaptability and can be DC coupled. There is of course on our MIN a pre-PTO mode, which makes a lot of sense when your installer's installing uh, several units and need HJ or regulatory approval before actually doing the commissioning. So you can show up on site, get everything ready to go, put our inverter in pre-PTO mode, and then not have to go back to the site, which is amazing. Um, and then of course, with all of our inverters that would be grid tied, uh, or even off-grid. You can maximize self-consumption, export limit application back to the grid, 
or do time of use arbitrage in a place like where I'm at in California. Our off-grid products, uh, which Ryan is going to cover a bit more about, uh, single phase, uh, this is our SPF single phase, 3,000 to 3,500. Very popular across the world. Uh, SPF, 6,000 to 12,000. Again, split phase output. Generator compatible. Uh, and then our AXE modular low voltage battery, scalable from only five kilowatts all the way up to 400 kilowatts for light commercial use, things of this nature. Dave will be taking over the, the SPH presentation directly after this one. Uh, 10,000 watt uh, NEMA 4X rating for outdoor waterproof as well. And that's compatible with our also new ALP battery system, uh, low voltage battery system. Again, flexible, stackable, up to 240 kilowatt hours. The SPH is a 1.5 DC to AC ratio. Uh, so you can input 15 kilowatts of solar, output 10 to the grid, and 10 to the battery, even though it's a 10,000 watt rated inverter. Then we have a commercial system as well, and uh, we're very excited to be entering the, the CNI space because there are not a lot of competitors, particularly offering the types of solutions that we are uh, at the prices we are, which is amazing. Uh, we have four WIT inverters uh, from 28 to 100 kilowatt hours, and then our APX battery system as well, which you can see on the left, uh, stackable up to 200 kilowatts, I believe. You can, of course, maximize self-consumption, and this depends on your CNI usage or, or needs, self-consumption, peak shaving, demand charge, you know, just depending on what's going on on your local grid. You can set up a microgrid and you can use it for uh, power quality if you're having a lot of generators or things like this going on. Of course, use it for backup or possible to mount outside or inside. Uh, we do recommend you put shade over the CNI inverters, but uh, they are very flexible and outdoor rated. Again, it has that same modular battery stacking, battery mixing, um, so you don't need to recalibrate batteries. You can just, if one fails, the others will make up for it, and you can just add a new battery to the stack, uh, basically plug and play, which is amazing and what we're, what we're aiming for. Easy solutions for the US market. And of course, we uh, recently launched our portable power station division as well. Our portable power stations go direct to consumer compared to many of our uh, other products with which are distributed through our distributors, uh, like our lovely partner Renvu here. Um, this is our Vita 550, one of our smaller units, uh, half a kilowatt hour. And we launched these products at uh, a time when these are becoming very popular, uh, particularly during the pandemic. People wanted emergency power. They can be charged with solar or the wall outlet or a car charger. Um, this is our larger 1300. And we release these products similar to many of our others at top of the line specs. So we really only compete with one or two other companies in this area. And we're happy to you know, say it, it charges uh, one hour to 80% or 1.6 hours uh, from zero to 100. And these super fast charging times, whether from AC wall outlet or the solar, uh, that's really what makes these units the top of the line. Uh, our new Infinity 2000, which also has an RV plug. People often use generators in their RV. Our Infinity 2000 can be swapped out immediately and used uh, to power things like air conditioners or mini splits, uh, especially in an RV application or even construction off-grid application as well. And the 2000 is expandable. Those expandable units are going to be available on our website uh, within a month or two. Then upcoming, we have a, a 3.6 kilowatt and again, stackable, expandable, portable unit. This is going to be for you know tiny homes if you need portable power. Uh, I know we have a company that's looking into some uh, actually military applications. So that's very interesting. And here's the whole range here. Of course, Renvu is familiar with our EV charger. We have an AC EV charger and a DC EV charger. 
uh, level two and, and level three charging, uh, 2.5 hours and 1.25 hours for the 40 kilowatt charger. And that, that is a DC charger. So one's AC, one's DC. Um, and for can be used for you know multiple car households or even uh, smaller commercial applications in the EV charging space. So we're really excited to launch the uh, the 40 kilowatt charger this year as well. Uh, PV linkage mode: uh, your EV can be dynamically charged by surplus energy only. Compatible with every single type of EV, as expected. Uh, manual boost mode in case you need to get home and charge up immediately for another trip. And smart boosting to optimize the PV and everything uh, while you're charging up your EV. You need an, an additional CT for, for doing load balancing, but uh, it allows the inverter to not be overloaded and the EV can soak up some of the extra uh, PV coming through. And I am going to go ahead and turn it over. Actually, no. Before I turn it, well, we'll do the live commissioning after Ryan's portion on the MIN. So yeah, I'm going to turn it over to Dave, and Dave can uh, begin presenting now. I'll stop sharing. Right. Let me get set up here and start sharing. Okay, please let me know if you do not see my screen. Uh, my name is Dave Dean. I'm a product marketing manager uh, with GrowWatt. So thank you for being here today. And thank you for Renvu for, uh, uh, for co-hosting this with us with GrowWatt. I am going to go through one of our new products that's really actually just now being launched. Really, I'll say Q3, uh, which basically is the end of this month, right? So um, uh, called the SPH 10,000. You can see the whole part number there. But uh, but it's a, just to give everybody kind of a quick overview, it's our a low voltage solution, right? So it's a 48 volt solution. It's compatible with both lithium batteries and with lead acid. Um, for those of you that are familiar with Solark, uh, especially through Renvu, um, you very similar to some of those products. And I want to kind of walk you through what are some of the nuances and the differences between the products. But I'm re we're really excited to launch this new product called the SPH series. Let me make sure I've got it over here and can get down. There we go. Um, this is just, a, this is obviously not the whole spec sheet, but just a real quick, uh, quick view of kind of, uh, you know, a high level view of what's going on in the SPH. Again, it's a 48 volt system. It has three MPPTs. Um, you know, you can do two strings per MPPT. It's got a lot of really good, strong uh, specifications. And again, without without reading each of these, um, I'm going to get into kind of a comparison here in just a moment. So it can compare against some of the products that you're already familiar with. Here's an overview of kind of how it's hooked up. It's really not specifically designed to be a whole home backup. It's really more of a partial, you know, more of a protected load backup where you got a protected load panel. And, um, uh, but it can be beca because you can, you can um, parallel systems together, which does provide a whole home backup solution. But this is kind of an overview of just to give you a feel for you know, very, very specific, very general. Let me try again. Very uh, like all the things that you're already selling or already installing. Um, as Tyler mentioned, we do have one of the one of the batteries that's compatible that uh, GrowWatt sells is the ALP series battery. It's modular in design. It works works great with the SPH, and you can see the specs there. It has 9540A. Uh, you know, it's indoor outdoor rated, uh, five kilowatt hours per module. And, uh, and you can go up to 400 kilowatt hours. And, and again, we'll get into this in a little bit more as we talk more about the inverter. So quick overview, the uh, the SPH, uh, you know, inverter does have an LCD touchscreen. So pretty much anything that you can do um, on an app, you can also do in the front, right, right there in front of the unit, which is awesome. Um, it uh, has a lot of different uh, working modes, you know, different energy modes to be able to fit any application that you're looking at. Uh, it, it has, you know, it does AC coupling, DC coupling, so it's great for retrofit applications. As I said before, it will will support um, lead acid batteries and lithium batteries. It's also got, uh, it's also compatible compatible with generators, and of course, it's outdoor rated, and you can see that the uh, the temperature range that it will operate and uh, and the warranty, strong warranty. So, why buy this one? Right, there's a lot of options out there. Why buy the SPH? 
And I've just pu pu pulled out a couple things here that that jump out to me, and then we're going to literally do a comparison. But it's you know it's a really the, the good news is it's an inexpensive hybrid solution, both for good for good for on grid and off grid. And in this solution, you're not forced to pay for things that you may not want or may not use. And we'll talk about that in a moment. It's easy to install. You can do it from the touchscreen. You can do it from the app. It's easy to commission. Uh, flexible operating modes. And again, we talked about some of these others. You can have up to six inverters in parallel. And it's just a real workhorse out there, right? If you just want something that's uh, fairly inexpensive, but but will get the job done, that's what that's where this one is is targeted. I like to compare it against something that you guys probably already know. And uh, I'm going to say, you know, in addition to offering GrowWatt, you know, as Rez already mentioned, you know, Renvu offers a good selection of 48 volt inverters with some good companies like Fortress Power and Solark and others to fit lots of different applications and budgets. So why install the GrowWatt? Um, basically, this isn't your typical um, product comparison where, where we as a manufacturer say, okay, let's handpick the specs and really want to compare and all of a sudden magically grow out, becomes the best of everything, right? Every manufacturer can do that. They can handpick the specs. But what I did is I wanted to be real and I wanted to show a handful of specs that you could actually see the differences, good and bad. But and and then we'll get to the bottom. Why then grow what? But if you look at it, if you know, for those of you, of course, that are already doing with business with Renvu, I believe you guys sell the Solark and the Fortress, um, and those are very similar. And you can see the PV input. Um, you know, you can see that they're pretty similar across the board. Grow what's a little bit less than the others. Number of PVT uh, MPPTs three right across the board. Um, I put a little asterisk next to the Solark because as you go down in the Solark line, like the 12K or, or less, you get two MPPTs. So so even, so even I'm trying to compare the GrowWatt against really probably some of the nicest uh, units that are out there today with the NV and the EG4 and the, and the 15, the limitless 15K. So, so just to give you a real feel, and again, we don't always win in every situation, but I want you to see how close almost everybody is, and then where the value play comes to play here. Um, MPPT max voltage, you can see right across there, GrowWatt is right in that happy middle of, of the others. The startup voltage, we're a little bit higher on that one. Uh, max input current per MPPT. Uh, I wanted to point this out because although the other inverters, the ones that you're probably familiar with, have 25 amps you know, on MPPT number one, then it's 15 amps and 15 amps. That's the same way you can see on the Limitless, it's 26 and then 15, 15. On the Fortress Envy, it's 25 and then 15, 15. On the Grow Watt, you can see it's 22 amps across the board. So, so you know, so who wins or whatever, it kind of, again, very application dependent on that. Maximum charge discharge current, you can see we're a little bit lower on that, but but again, in the ball game for sure. All the certifications, all the compliances of all of these are basically the same, right? They can be installed in Hawaii, can be installed in Puerto Rico, can be installed in in the U.S. You know, in the in the in the U.S. and um, you know has all of the all of the certifications you would expect with with uh, leading inverters. Um, one of the things I want to point out is maximum units in parallel. Well, you know, you can see GrowWatt has six, others have 10. The Limitless, the Solark Limitless has 12. If you go down in their product line, it actually goes to, to nine, I believe it is, units in parallel max. Um, I point this out because this is great. And if and if I were trying to compare and I were a different company other than GrowWatt, I would say, look, we can do more and more in parallel. But in reality, very, very, very few installations, <clears throat> excuse me, are um are more than six uh you know inverters. And so so really we end up covering about 98% of the installs anyway. And on those unique situations, you could of course go to a different different um option. I did pull out weight here just to compare. Um, you know, weight when you're when you're lugging things around, you're an install and you're lugging things around every day and you've got to pull things in and out of trucks and vans and 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 uh hang things on the wall and stuff like that. Even 10, 20, 30 percent difference or light, lighter, being lighter in weight makes a difference. So I like the ability that GrowWatt has from a standpoint of being able to to manhandle it and and be able to uh, you know put it and uh, handle it and put it wherever you need to. Um, there's also the uh, I brought this up just because it was a little bit a little bit something that not everybody had, and that's that. Uh, arc fault circuit interrupt and uh and interestingly enough on the fortress envy they they do it as as optional all the rest of them say yep that's part of it 
the total harmonic distortion. So anything that you're trying to, you know, if you want to make sure that the lines are clean and there's no distortion on that, um, you know, basically if the, the lower the number, the better on this. So I wanted to pull that out as well. So what am I trying to show here? What I'm really trying to show here is that the, the SPH, the grow watt, really is representing value. If you look at it, all of the specs are very similar. Yes, some are better, some are worse, but you're with the grow watt, you know, it's all about positioning the product for the right application. With the grow watt, it's less expensive, sometimes half the cost of others, just to give you an idea, but it's less expensive expensive than other um, options. There's there is no being right up front, there's no 200 amp wiring box that I know the Envy and, and the EG4 have, for example. But sometimes you don't need that. Sometimes you don't need all of that extra hardware. Uh again, depends on the application. So you're not paying for that up front with the with the grow up. Um, and again, just to just to make sure that uh, just to emphasize, reemphasize has the same certification, same number of MPPTs, and it's easier to handle because of the because of the lighter weight. So again, this was an interesting thing. I, I'm, I'm taking a chance putting this out here because grow up doesn't look the best in every situation until you compare it from a price perspective and what you get from a value perspective. So, so I, I encourage you to do that and, and really look at that as, as a uh, possible option. The, um, you know, we, we went through some of this. I mean, it's got a quick transition time of 10 milliseconds. Others do have 10, some are at 20, some are at four. So, so again, right in that, that meaty middle, I'll call it. Um, you've got three MPPTs. We talked about the, the charge discharge current. A lot of these we've already mentioned, um, six units in parallel. It does, the last bullet, it does support, uh, um, you know, three phase systems. And we'll talk about that. I, I've got a diagram that I can show you there in just a moment. And we can also answer questions on that in the Q&A uh, if you have more questions on three phase. The uh, the touchscreen um, again everything's available from the front it's all touchscreen you can look at it you can see what the status is whether it's on grid off grid you know the, obviously time and and what the production and and things like that look like you can also use the screen to you know to do grid settings and op change operation modes and you know anything that you want to be able to do from the app you can do from the front from the front screen as well. Um, Tyler did hit this this screen already. It's a, even though it's called a 10K, it can actually bring in 15K of PV, 10K of which can go to the loads, 5K of which can be uh, directed to charging the battery. Multiple MPPTs, very flexible. Again, very a good strength of the SPH product line. You can do one string per MPPT, or you can do two strings per MPPT, and that's really what this is showing. Uh, again, to to be able to cover uh, shading or uh, you know different you know different areas of the roof or whatever uh, unique situations, and this will uh, will allow you to make the best um, configuration of that. Uh, safe, reliable, all the, you know, the safety listings, and I won't necessarily go through all of these, but, you know, you can see the words protection, 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 monitoring, protection, protection. I mean, there's just anything you need um, is you know, from a safety perspective is there. And again, what I'm pointing out here is that um, these are, this is the same things that other guys offer, but we offer it at less. Um, the uh, SPH, we can have up to six in parallel. This one happens to show three, but obviously that gets up to 60 kilowatts if you put six in parallel. On the three phase, uh, there's we've got the ability to do 120 three phase and 208 three phase. And again, we can get into this if you guys want more details on this. It's in our install manual as well as we can handle this at the, um, at the Q&A at the end here. Give you a quick overview of the hardware. Uh, this is a close-up shot of the, you know, of the area where you would do the wiring, and you can see in the upper left-hand corner is where the batteries would connect. I'm just going to hit these really quick. This section right here, toward the bottom left, um, is where your PV lands. Next to that, to the right, is where your your grid or your generator, your where your grid connections come in, your generator if you had one, and then and then the the loads would be would go here. You've also got some RJ45 connectors here, which is for your communication from your battery to the uh, to the inverter, and um, that's really about it. And then there's another connection over here, which will I've got some blow up uh, pictures of this, so you can see it a little bit better. 
Here's the battery connection. I won't read this, but basically this is where it goes. You've got you've got another set of connectors here. So if you need to parallel some some batteries, you can and you know easily. And then also it's a you know 48 volt system, so you can see the voltage range there. And then um, and then suggested wiring to use for that. And again, this is all in the install manual and or a quick quick reference guide for you. Communications from the battery to the inverter. If you have a lithium battery, then obviously, and I pointed that out before, there's an RJ45 connector right here, and you can use just a, uh, like a Cat5 that goes, you know, the connector that goes from the battery, from a communication side, from the battery to the inverter. And then on the lead, if you had a lead acid battery, then there is a uh, an area, and I'll show you where this section is here in a moment, but there's an area where you can set up the temperature sensor for lead, you know, for lead acid batteries. And there it is. So again, this is a picture of the of the unit, but off to the left uh, side, there's a little, um, you know, some some connectors there. And that's where you basically all of your low voltage stuff goes, you know, connects, whether it's your CTs, whether it's your generator, um, you know, on off signal, and as well as the um, you know, your temperature sensor, if you have lead acid batteries. So that's where that all connects. And then your PV connection, again, won't go through all of this, but it does suggest what kind of wire to use and where those land. And, uh, and it's easy to get to the areas big enough to get your hands in there without being too cramped and uh, uh, makes it, makes it uh, for a quick installation. Your uh, AC connections, you know, for your grid and your generator, or all your input and your, and then of course your load output for that. And again, it uh, suggests what what size wire to use and how to strip the wire and all that kind of stuff. But this is where those wires land. Let's get into some of the some of the cool stuff about it. You know, one of the things that makes SPH unique is that there's lots of variable, lots of ways to to program the system, to set the system up, to to, to create different parameters so that it will operate in uh, in different scenarios. And I know, we're, and I'm going to hurry because we don't have a whole lot of time for, for others to present. But um, but you've got very similar. If you're familiar with the Solar, these screens should look somewhat similar and um, and and feel you know feel very similar as far as the the ways you select make selections. Um, this allows you to do on grid, you know, self consumption, you know, zero export mode, export mode. Uh, you know, what's the priority of of you know PV then grid then battery, or do you want to change that? It allows you to say. I want the PV to um, to first power the load, or I want the PV to first uh, first uh, charge the battery. Um, you know, just so all sorts of stuff. Everything's available here to be able to change. The install menu is pretty clear to to walk you walk you through those scenarios. Self consumption mode, same thing. You know, again, you just choose self consumption mode. You've got a couple of options there. Whether you want battery first, load first, and you know that kind of thing. And uh, again, fairly fairly straightforward. Zero export, same thing. I'm just going to keep moving on if you guys are okay with that. Uh, time of use, there are five, I'm sorry, six time of use windows. And, you know, um, you know, time of use, obviously you can, you know, set the time when, when, um, you can um, you know set the time period to implement the setting. You can um, set the battery charge from a voltage perspective or a percent or a state of charge percentage. Um, you can you know tell it whether you want to use the generator to offset the shortage when the battery is down and less than the value that you set here. So again, lots of different options, um, which which makes it great because that way you can set it for any application. Also makes it a little bit complicated sometimes because there are so many options. But again, everything is fairly straightforward on how to how to make that happen. Uh, peak shaving, same thing. You would you can see the the red bar there. Um, you can set grid peak shaving. You can say the maximum power, and uh, you know that that you you want to you only want the grid to go to that level. So you can always be sure that you're not you're not going above that and and getting uh, getting excess charges from the utility. Generator setting again. It's compatible with a generator. You basically say you know how it works. You know what percentage you want it to uh, to charge at. You know, um, uh, you know, gen. You, you can um, uh, you know optionally select things to say generator charge. If it's enabled, the generator will charge the battery when the generator's on. Again, pretty pretty cool setup uh, from a generator perspective. This is probably the most, um, I guess they call it the classic setting. This is probably the setting that's used the most. And again, this would be, it's like, okay, choose this, select this, put this in here. And, uh, and this is probably what's used the majority of the time out there for installations. And 
that was it in a quick overview. Thank you for your time. I'm going to stop sharing and pass this over to whoever is next on this. Thank you, guys. Thank you all. Uh, and that said, and thank you, Dave. Uh, that said, this should be jumping over to myself. Uh, again, as mentioned earlier in the presentation, my name is Ryan Gravel. I work with the service team here in the U.S. and Canada for GrowWatt. Uh, I'm going to be going over our off-grid product selection as well as our min hybrid uh, solution, which is more of sort of your turnkey uh, application here in the States. But that said, happy to go through these with everyone. Uh, so as mentioned, the first topic will be off-grid solutions. Uh, basically, we have a few slides that sort of overview the uh, interconnectability of the systems, the flexibility. As mentioned, the off-grid products, well, they can be tied to a utility grid are mostly focused around single phase or potentially split phase application. Uh, you can, similar to the SPH, run multiple units in parallel for more robust solutions. Uh, but that said, again, we'll be focusing on items like the SPF, TL, LVM, which basically the naming structure actually will indicate the function and form of the system. So, for example, the system here listed the TL, LVM, US would indicate that it's a transformer list low voltage unit uh, has 120 volts single phase output. Again, you can run multiple in parallel for a split phase application. You would want to pair that with an auto, uh, an ATS switch. Uh, basically that will help you get the true split phase output. And the M would indicate an MPPT controller. You will see that across our product line just to ensure maximum efficiency and output of your PV strings. Obviously, like most string inverters, you do want to coordinate your panel arrays and strings by azimuth. Uh, you would generally want to avoid east and west facing panels in the same string just to ensure maximum power output. That said, uh, as we go through here, uh, again, you have a bit of a range uh, here with the SPFs, you will typically have the 3 and 3.5K models, the 3.5 and 5K models. Uh, the SPFs, again, are scalable because you can run up to six units in parallel. So depending on your application, you do have a lot of flexibility to make sure that you are covering the needed loads. That said, uh, you do, again, have things like the equalization around charging, the ability to connect generator for your outputs. Uh, again, being fully, truly off-grid or grid connected as needed. But again, these systems are focused mostly for off-grid application. Uh, that said, one thing I do tend to call out around the SPF product line is these products are typically designed to be installed under some type of shelter uh, just because they're not quite as high on the IP weatherproofing rating as, say, for example, our MIN product or the SPH product. Uh, again, most of our customers are typically installing these alongside the batteries and MP, uh, charge controllers, depending on the specific model, uh, within storage cabinets or in basements, garages, and so on. Uh, that said, as we continue to the next slide here, <clears throat> excuse me. So the SPF DVM MV MPV, this is a uh, larger scale unit. It goes from four kilowatts all the way up to 12 kilowatts. This one is a true split phase out of the box. So you can have 240 volt output. Uh, that said, it does have two MPPT trackers, uh, built in transformer. So that way you can manage your loads directly from the inverter itself. Uh, pretty nice turnkey solution. Uh, that said, it has the ability to deal with surge uh, demand and things like that a little bit more than the standard SPF. Uh, and these can all be combined with the AXE low voltage battery. Uh, one of the great things about the modular AXE battery is, as you can see in the image here, they are effectively stackable. The control wires and power wires would connect in the upper right hand corner of this image. 
uh, as we quote here, easy installation, 30 minute install. Again, because effectively you're only making one connection at the top of the stack, makes it really easy. Uh, and obviously the modules will auto recognize when connected together, again, making it super simple for install. Uh, that said, they're also designed to be less impactful to the environment and more durable by being a cobalt free lithium iron phosphate uh, configuration. What this is going to help you do is ensure more cycles of the battery over the lifetime of the system. Uh, and that said, a, a battery cycle is considered a full discharge. So if you have three 33% discharges, that would count as one cycle, as opposed to a lot of the lithium polymer uh, batteries, which can sometimes be more susceptible to those power cycles. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that said, this is a blown out version showing the stacking and communication wiring setup. Again, designed to be very intuitive and straightforward to ensure efficiency on site for you and your installers. Uh, and this here is again just showing the communication over the RS45 and CAN communication. Again, just trying to lead to expanded flexibility. And that said, I note that we can have this being used with the AXE batteries. Uh, but the SPF can also be used with lead acid batteries, uh, other third party lithium batteries and so on. Uh, certainly, if you were looking to explore the product, you could certainly reach out to our sales team or our service support team. And we'd be happy to uh, speak to you to confirm those uh, batteries. Or obviously, Renvu would be, I'm sure, happy to help you identify the proper battery for your solution. Uh, that said, uh, the nice thing about our units is with the standard SPF, you can make sure that you're using full capacity of the inverter uh, as far as doing a full five kilowatt out of five kilowatt unit. Uh, that said here, I'm not sure why we have a grow on inverter on the general on the left hand side, but effectively uh, looking at units that sometimes need a third or external charge controller and things like that. One of the nice things about the SPF uh, units in the US is that they do have the charge control built right in. Again, keeping simplicity to your load management. Uh, that said, you also have flexibility around your stringing solutions to make sure that you're maximizing your efficiency with wiring on the roof and flexibility around different panel types and so on. Uh, this here shows the example of a single phase or split phase uh, configuration of multiple units in parallel. As mentioned, you can run up to six units on a single system. And again, they will manage and distribute the uh, power to the loads, the utility of battery. Uh, that said, you also have equalization for charging. So that way, as mentioned, you have the flexibility around either uh, charge point, charge control, or uh, battery management system uh, charge control. So again, giving you flexibility around application and customizing it to your custom customer's needs. Uh, that said, like most solar systems, you'll need to make sure that you have your appropriate tools for in installation, uh, your multimeter screwdrivers, amp meters, and so on. Uh, that said, this one here on the left-hand side is showing one of the standard SPF units. You'll typically notice, and actually I believe there's a slide down that'll show how you can uncover the bottom of the SPF unit and access your... AC connections, your PV connections, your battery connections, and so on. Everything will be on the lower side of the inverter uh, enclosure itself. That said, one thing that has come up in some markets with AHJs is uh, depending on the inspector, sometimes they do want uh, rigid conduit or troughs underneath the SPF units. We have seen that feedback and we've actually seen a lot of success with running these right adjacent to uh, electrical troughs. Uh, so again, depending on your local inspector, you may want to discuss that with them during application, but I'll show how that compares to the MIN series product in a moment uh, where we have built in knockouts and a terminal box built right into the inverter. Uh, that said, you know, while the system is in power, obviously you don't want to be disconnecting the batteries under load. But that said, uh, we do limit, we do uh, state that you should have no more than three uh, parallel battery groups uh, on the system. And as noted earlier, uh, you do generally want to make sure that you are being protected from water and uh, very fine dust. Again, uh, it's an IP20 rating for the enclosure. 
Uh, occasionally you may have to clean the fans on these, but that said at the price point at the value and with the flexibility, we still think there's a tremendous value point to your customers uh, again, for both off and on grid solutions. But again, as long as the inverters mounted somewhere that's not in direct exposure to the elements, you should be fine. Uh, and that said, this is just a little table showing some of the uh, wiring and current uh, inputs and limitations. Again, a lot of flexibility depending on what your application case is. We do have uh, quite a variety of SPF products available uh, for your use. And similarly, same thing for the AC wire size solutions. Uh, so this one here, showing the installation ports and terminals. Uh, one of the items is depending on how you're looking to get these Uh, but all of our SPF products also have an optional accessory, which is known as a data logger. Uh, it's a little USB-based stick, which allows the customer to either connect their SPF system to the cloud uh, via Wi-Fi or 4G cellular connectivity. Uh, you can also use an Ethernet cable for a manual hardwire connection as well. Uh, but that said, we do see a lot of folks that either have mobile homes and RVs with uh, renewable energy solutions that will use the uh, wireless communication settings just for simplicity and flexibility. Uh, but that said, again, all the terminals would be on the lower side of the cabinet and accessible by removing the lowermost terminal cover. As you can see on the left hand side, it would be below the green line there. Uh, that said, the SPF DVM is uh, a little bit larger of a unit, but the terminals are actually exposed on the bottom. Again, this is the one that comes from the factory with the transformer built in and the split phase output available. Uh, again, slightly heavier duty for, uh, again, off-grid use. Uh, but again, we can certainly provide any of the data spec sheets for your specific application, as well as uh, images and uh, installation guides as needed. That said, again, you know, just going over, looking at different module types, speaking about how to calculate the optimal string sizing. Uh, generally speaking, unlike some manufacturers, because we're not using module level electronics, you don't specifically have a minimum or maximum number of modules that can be on the string. Really, your considerations are your voltage and current that will determine, depending on the type of module you're using, how you would string those uh, strings to the inverter. And again, we're here uh, as well as I'm sure Renvu is as well to discuss that with you and make sure that you're making the appropriate pairings to get the most out of your system. Uh, that said here, this actually speaks again to that data logger dongle. Uh, in this particular case, they're showing the Wi-Fi F, uh, which is a Wi-Fi Oh, it's there's in Wi-Fi GPRS terminal, sorry. Uh, but effectively, again, that's a USB terminal on the bottom side of the inverter and uh, showing the Shine Phone commissioning tool, which would allow you to associate the hardware on site with an online monitoring plant if you want to view that system remotely from a computer. Uh, also, again, the Shine Phone app will locally be able to give you visibility to production, consumption, power transfer, battery charging, and so on. Uh, again, pretty pretty all in one as far as being able to access and maintain your system, which is great. Uh, that said, here just showing a, a setup of a parallel single phase connection, effectively just making sure that you are either having a single inverter or multiple inverters, identifying which machine it is in that. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, within the organization of the system. Again, you can assign machine numbers so that they know how to react with each other. And again, depending on single split or three phase application, we'll make sure that they're operating in conjunction to make sure it's matching your utility requirements and your load requirements. Uh, so as opposed to the three phase, or sorry, single phase, this is the three phase example. On the right hand side, you can see the L1 phase, L2 phase, L3 phase where you can notice it says 3P signifying three phase and then one, two, three indicating which position the program is uh, for each individual inverter. Again, just adding more flexibility to your solutions for you and your customers. Uh, that said, just talking about different batteries, for example, here, lithium battery connection, showing how you would configure that in the battery type. Uh, and actually, I guess we don't have a lead acid slide on here. Uh, but that said, we can jump into the different power modes. 
which really this again is going to depend on your customer's needs, customer's priority, if they are utility connected, whether they have a time of use charge or uh, import export limitations and so on. But again, allows you to prioritize solar first, utility first, uh, leave it flexible with solar and utility having equal priority and similar for output and charging. Uh, so again, depending on if you want power to go to your battery first, if you want it to go to your loads first, if you want it to go to the utility first and so on. Uh, again, a lot of flexibility there. And then again, some working modes showing uh, sort of what that prioritization is based on utility or solar or battery being available. Again, uh, don't want to spend too much time on this because we want to be cognizant of getting through everything. Uh, that said here again, solar versus utility first. Uh, this is output priority setting mode. Here we go. Uh, so again, remote monitoring. This just sort of shows the uh, data flow between the local communication, the cloud, the Shine phone app, and the Shine server app. Again, whether you want to look at it remotely on a tablet or phone device versus the internet or locally. And again, if you're looking to have either a cellular connection or a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, but again, in the upper right-hand corner, it just shows some example of power flow and data for the machines that you would have available to you, uh, both as an installer and as an end customer. And then a couple of project cases showing the application of these different products uh, worldwide. Uh, you can see South Africa, Turkey, and Brazil here. Uh, as mentioned, you know, we certainly sell quite a number of these products, uh, but we do see a really high adaptation of our min series product, especially in residential use cases. And again, we'll show those in just a moment here. Uh, so that said, jumping right into the min, uh, this is the product that was specifically sort of optimized for the US market. It's designed to be a grid tie inverter with off-grid backup as necessary during power outages or uh, utility management. So again, you can have it PV only as grid tied. You can have it with a battery, but uh, no backup. So effectively, this is for peak shaving or uh, time of use application. You can then also have the system with an ATS or SIN for partial home backup. So you may have a main, uh, say, for example, exterior panel with heavy duty loads such as well pumps, pools, and HVAC systems, and then the interior panel can be backed up. Uh, you can do that in increments of either 50 amp, 100 amp, or 200 amp backup, depending on the application. And then in the lower right-hand corner, we have the full whole home backup where the entire service panel would be fed via the uh, SYN, which is an ATS uh, energy management system and smart meter all built in one. Uh, that said, this just shows here sort of the application where, again, with the MIN series product in the SYN, you could have two power sources from grid or generator. We're actually also working on an AC coupling function for these systems as well. Not quite ready yet, but long term, our goal is to have the ability to have a third party uh, PV system also integrated within the backup and off grid. Uh, that said, within the inverter and APX battery solution, you could also integrate a EV charger. Here it does note bi-directional. Uh, the bi-directional function isn't quite ready yet, but again, similar to the generator function, we're hoping that'll be ready quite soon. Uh, and that said, you could either have some DC loads, uh, but again, most people are typically uh, running a protected loads panel. In this case, again, it's showing a whole main loads panel backed up. <clears throat> uh, the solution itself, uh, really popular because again, it has a wide range of application all the way from three kilowatts, all the way up to 11, four kilowatts. Again, uh, can... Typically, battery is DC coupled, but again, we have an AC coupled application as needed for folks that already have a PV system, but may not have the roof stringing to integrate directly with the grow watt. Uh, again, have integrated EMS software, so effectively you can prioritize if you're, again, grid conditioning, maximum self-consumption, backup only, and so on. Uh, AFCI uh, protection, just to make sure that you're not having any shorts and that it's up to the latest compliance for U.S. market. 
Uh, by default, the systems will automatically have a communication module or data logger installed, which are either a Wi-Fi and LAN configuration or our most popular variant, which is Wi-Fi and 4G. That said, we can certainly, if you have a customer that purchased a specific unit or had a specific unit installed and you have a concern about the communication or their uh, signal quality, once it's installed, you could certainly reach out to our service team and we're happy to help support you. And uh, if you had to update that communication protocol, but that said, again, the Wi-Fi and 4G tends to probably by about an 80% margin uh, be the preferred unit for most people. And that said, the Min Series product can use that same Shine Phone app we talked about a moment ago for commissioning, as well as Shine Tools, which is an installer optimized application. And again, we'll talk about those a little bit later. Uh, that said... This here is the APX high voltage battery. So unlike the SPF, which work on a 24 or 48 volt low voltage architecture, the high voltage batteries would be scaled on a 400 volt architecture. Uh, the APX battery is great because it's flexible from five kilowatts up to 30 kilowatts. It can allow your customers a low barrier to entry to uh, critical load storage and things like that. Uh, but again, if over time they decide they want additional runtime or additional output capacity, uh, you can add additional battery modules to increase the current output and make sure that they're keeping all their uh, loads online, even in the event of an outage. Uh, and between both the inverter and the battery themselves, they're both IP66 uh, rated, which means they're resistant to uh, uh, continued water exposure, not submerged, but uh, water rain and uh, splashing, as well as fine dust. Uh, so again, just keeps things simple and also lithium iron phosphate for both uh, thermal stability, puncture resistance, and uh, no risk of thermal runaway because of the stable architecture of that uh, battery type. And here, just showing some examples of what the visual appearance of the different configurations look like. Uh, we do recommend that you don't exceed five modules stacked high. Uh, and again, we just do this for a safety and aesthetic standpoint. You can go up to 20 kilowatts in one array, but if you go over 20 kilowatt hours, we do recommend splitting it into two stacks. Again, just to make sure that it's not exceeding uh, height requirements. Uh, that said, we do still have uh, stock of our ARO high voltage battery as well. These are uh, single cabinets which have three battery modules inside. You can see the battery module on the right. They're 3.3 kilowatts per, and you can run up to two of these cabinets per MIN inverter. So your sizing would be from 6.6 .6 to 20 kilo or 19.8 kilowatt hours, effectively 20. Uh, and again, designed to basically send and receive power, NEMA 4X rated, so they are designed to be in and outdoors. Uh, that said, you know, really flexible solution, 10 year, 6,000 cycle, uh, and field serviceable, field replaceable for easier flexibility. Uh, but again, for some customers that sort of have typically, again, if you're just doing uh, a, a partial home backup, I think these are a great solution. With the new APX, I'm I'm a giant fan of the uh, stackable, scalable units with that uh, going all the way up to 30 kilowatt hours. But again, we have the different options depending on what your customer's needs are, and we're happy to discuss that and cover it with you. Uh, that being said, this is a photo of our smart meter. It's designed for uh, up to revenue grade metering or sorry, not technically not revenue grade because it's consumption versus production. Uh, but that said, accuracy as fine as 0.5% uh, with the uh, Acrel CTs. We do also have the ability to use uh, Rogowski coils and Slim CTs as well. Uh, we can certainly provide the spec to that if you have a unique application case where a standard traditional CT does not fit. Uh, but the nice thing about these is you can use them with a PV only or partial home backup for uh, grid, uh, grid conditioning, no export, and so on to make sure that you're meeting the utility requirements. If you do do a whole home backup with an SYN uh, automatic transfer switch, that will actually have a smart meter and auto transformer integrated. Uh, so that said, you don't have to buy the additional accessory. It'll automatically measure your import and export values and consumption on the home. 
And uh, if you do have a system with an SYN and battery backup, you can also see that power management uh, online and on your online monitoring. Uh, that said, the ATS itself versus the SYN is, again, just an auto transformer with a 50 or 100 amp backup capacity. It's designed to do partial home backup for critical loads or a protected load panel. And uh, again, is scalable depending on uh, what you're looking to do within that property. And again, the SYN de designed to be a whole 200 amp pass through for an entire home panel backup also supports generator uh, integration for backup as well. That said, again, uh, ShineFone app, this is your local hotspot commissioning. ShineFone, again, is also something the end customer could use to be able to look at and monitor their system locally if they chose not to use the online monitoring portal. Again, we always typically recommend having the system connected to our server. That allows us to better service both the customer and the installer in the event you guys had a question or needed operational help. If it is online, we can even offer some remote servicing options remotely. Uh, but again, if it's not connected to the internet, we would just have to speak you through that. And then beyond that, we also have, again, the Shine server, which is the online monitoring portal. Again, here showing daily and lifetime input, output, export to grid, load consumption, so on. Also showing your battery and load uh, charging and discharging profiles, seeing how that looks for you guys. Uh, and then we just sort of jump into some wiring examples, uh, depending again, if you're looking to do a partial home backup, as you see here with a sub panel and backed up loads versus a main panel and heavy duty loads that would drain the battery too fast or possibly overload depending on what the circuit was in what the uh, power to the home was. Uh, again, just single line single line diagram showing the position of the sub panel, smart meter, the battery systems, inverter, and so on. Uh, this particular setup, it looks like they are using an SYN 200 amp uh, backup uh, at, with a sub panel, uh, which again, you can use an ATS or an SYN for a partial home backup, but it would require an SYN if you're looking to do a whole home backup. Uh, and then this, by comparison, is that whole home backup. Again, just breaking down the position of the min inverter, two battery packs, the SYN, and the whole home load distribution panel. Again, uh, a lot of flexibility there, and our field application team is happy to walk through any designs with you that you might need. Uh, that said, jumping over to the inverter installation. So this shows a bit of an image showing how the inverter is set up. Uh, again, the lower half of the cabinet is uh, able to be open to expose everything from your PV inputs, your DC disconnect switch, uh, which is available from the lower left-hand side as well. The antenna ports, which come in from the data logger on the terminal block down to the bottom of the inverter. The inverter will come with two antennas for both the Wi-Fi and 4G if applicable. If you have a Wi-Fi only unit, it'll have one uh, one antenna. That said, you have all your inverter bracket on the back, uh, the heat sink to make sure that you're running cool enough. Uh, one question that does come up with a lot of installers is around spacing. We do specify a 300 millimeter left, right, up and down uh, pathway to allow airflow around the inverter. This number does not stack. If you have two inverters side by side, you would not have to allow two feet between. You could still stick with the one foot as long as you don't have a heat source or other obstruction that might prevent airflow around the units. Uh, so again, another simple thing that allows for additional flexibility and compact installation to make sure you're being uh, uh, mindful of the customer space on their wall. <clears throat> and here's a more clear photo showing that lower disconnect as well as the knockouts. One question that again comes up often is the DC and AC input knockouts that are pre-marked there are a three quarter inch variant. Uh, if you do need to use a one inch variant for your conduit needs in your operation, that's acceptable. It won't cause any warranty voids or anything like that. Uh, again, I know that's something we come up with commonly in the field. That said, uh, all your PV terminals are in the middle center on the lower side. Right above that is the data logger, which is your communication module. 
to the right of that, if applicable, you could have a production revenue grade meter. Uh, again, the standard meter is a 1% margin of error. The revenue grade meter will bring it down to 0.5%. Uh, and below that, you have your AC grid interconnection and outputs. And then you also have your backup load output as well. Uh, and to the left of that, your battery input also. That's your high voltage DC connection. Uh, just showing the PV wiring or battery wiring, all your PV positives will be on the left, negatives will be on the right. Uh, that is slightly unique to our product to some of our competitors. Rather than pairing each string directly, uh, there'll be space between the two terminal blocks. The maximum PV voltage in is a 600 volt DC, but that is essentially your open current voltage. Generally speaking, your target would be just below 500 volts in operating load. That's going to make sure you're getting the absolute most. You can go up to 550, uh, but you will potentially see a little bit of derating as you approach that 550 absolute limit. And again, the 600 is the top limit in open circuit current or open circuit voltage. Sorry. Uh, the AC grid side, pretty straightforward like most. You'll have your line one, line two, and neutral. Uh, being mindful to also ground the system as well uh, based on your local AHJ and electrical code. Pretty straightforward. Uh, backup loads, similarly uh, to the left-hand side, because it is an AC tied connection, it would be right on that same terminal block. And then again, antennas down below the unit. So again, uh, you will notice one is male, one is female. So there's no real way to mix those up. Just be mindful as you mount them. And then jumping into the smart meter, again, if you have an SYN, it's already going to be included. But if you do have an ATS or a PV only system, the smart meter will allow you to make use of import export limitations and also measure uh, power going to loads or to grid as necessary. Uh, that said, RCTs are designed to place the arrow facing the load, so away from the grid. With that, obviously, you want to make sure your L1CT is on the same electrical phase as the L1 input for reference on the meter itself. Otherwise, you could risk having an inverted or reversed uh, consumption number. But as long as you have that phase incorrect, you should be fine. One thing you can always do is temporarily turn off the PV production to make sure you have a positive consumption value and then re-engage the PV conversion, at which point you'll know that your meter is calibrated properly and your import-export is accurate. Uh, one other call out I always do just coming from the operations and install side, always do your best to try to make sure your CT is between the meter and the main breaker on the home, any circuits or breakers that are on the utility side of the consumption CTs will not be able to be measured by the CT. So you always want to be upstream of the first breaker on the customer's loads. Uh, here, just showing some of the terminal blocks and how they're wired up. Pretty straightforward. Again, uh, your reference AC wiring, your signal wiring, and then the CTs L1, L2. Uh, and then here, it just shows the terminal ports in the bottom of the uh, main control board within the inverter right above the PV inputs. <clears throat> And again, all of these wiring diagrams would be in the installation manual of the MIN product as well as the SPF. Uh, so certainly as you go through to install, uh, all that will be in there for your reference. Uh, final, jumping over to the ATSs themselves, this is just an exploded view of the partial home backup ATS unit. As mentioned again, we have two backup sizes, uh, both you well listed, just making it uh, easy for your application. And again, you would just create a protected loads panel to power off of this box. And again, similar wiring diagram showing your input and output of your L1 and L2. <clears throat> and then again, just wire sizing requirements and so on. Uh, so pretty straightforward. Uh, this is an exploded view of the SYN. So as mentioned before, not only does it have the auto transformer and a main disconnect breaker, it also has a smart meter integrated. Uh, also IP65 protection level and UL certified. So that said, again, you can use this with either a single phase or split phase output, again, leading to additional flexibility. But the primary application of this, again, is for a whole home panel backup, also for the ability to integrate a generator if needed. Uh, again, the benefit to that is, generally speaking, you don't have a minimum generator size required. 
However, we typically recommend that the generator be, the, be at least two times the capacity of the inverter and ensure that the generator has the capability to power all loads within the home, even if the PV and battery were unavailable. The main reason for this is the SYN will measure the output of the, invert, uh, the generator, and if it's insufficient to power the loads on the home, you could have your system go into a standby. So you always want to make sure there's enough power to power the loads and surplus could be routed back to the storage system as needed. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and again, just some photos showing the bottom of the SYN, the predetermined knockouts that are available for wiring, again, giving you flexibility for installation, and then just the different terminals throughout the machine. Again, all of this will be in your installation manual. Uh, let's see here. Again, I mean, pretty straightforward. Uh, RS-485 communications, line one, line two, neutral. Uh, just making sure you're not having any neutral loops between your protected loads panel and your main panel. Uh, pretty straightforward. APX, the battery itself. Again, it's a uh, very straightforward modular design. The uppermost component is the power module itself, which effectively will communicate back with the SYN and the inverter to make sure that uh, battery is being charged and discharged as needed. The battery cells themselves stack below that main unit and come pre-packaged with power and communication cables. Once they are stacked and secured to the wall, uh, whether it be on a wall mount or a floor mount, you effectively would then just wire them in between each of the units and the communication would go back to the main inverter and SYN. And again, it's self-detecting and you would just set the battery from the selection while you were commissioning. Uh, my preferred method of doing so is with the Shine Tools app, which makes it super easy. You can select your ESS backup mode as well as your battery type between the ARO or the APX. Uh, very easy application for you. And here again, just showing what the max kilowatt output is, depending on the size of the stack, how many battery modules you have. And again, how you, on the right-hand side, how you would stack them to make sure that they were safe, secure, and not prone to tipping uh, by getting too tall. And again, the wiring diagram here showing coming from the battery module on the top left, coming down the left-hand side, going to the top of the second array, and then back down. Again, already pre-cut wires uh, between the battery modules themselves. So the only wiring would be between the inverter and the first battery module itself, or power module itself, sorry. <clears throat> uh, and also flexibility around the covers. And again, it's all weatherproof. So pretty straightforward to access and wire, just keeping things simple for you guys. And that top module, the power module, would have a DC disconnect as well as a start button on the right hand side as well. Uh, and that said, we get down to the point of commissioning, which I will jump off my slide and hand it back over to Tyler, as I believe he is planning on showing a live commissioning for everybody. Great. <clears throat> Good stuff, Ryan. Thank you very much. Uh, right. Super detailed. I think that's awesome. People can uh, look back and review it in the recording uh, for installers and end users. And I know we're a bit over time, uh, so I'm going to demonstrate just how fast it is to commission our residential MIN system. Um, less than five minutes uh, really commissioning them, whether you're an installer or an end user. So maybe a little awkward, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, demonstrate just right on my phone screen here. Um, I'm actually gonna come behind the camera. So hopefully that works still. You can see we have three applications here. Oh, we have Shine Tools, which is primarily for installers. Uh, we have Shine Phone, which is for the end users. And we have Migro, which is actually for the portable power station uh, end consumer grade application. So we're going to go ahead and demonstrate within the Shine Tools application today. Uh, because if you're an installer installing multiple units, you're going to want that to uh, manage everything. And in order to do the commissioning, we're going to go ahead and select uh, direct Wi-Fi Bluetooth connection so we can connect right up to the inverter. These are the options. Uh, we have an MIN inverter just over here in the warehouse, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect up to that, select MIN, and it comes up with a photograph to scan the QR code on the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that.
There we go. It automatically recognized the uh, serial number and automatically input it. And we're going with the direct Wi-Fi connection. There it is. You can hit join. And we're in, connected to the inverter itself. So this is the main screen here uh, that installers would be seeing in the Shine Tools application. The Shine Phone application is a bit more simplified for, for end users who might want to just see a quick overview. But here in the Shine Tools app, uh, you can essentially go to Quick Settings and set up the inverter itself. You can see that we're connected to the grid. Uh, you can select different battery types, uh, whether it's the ARO, the APX battery, which Ryan just covered, or even we're compatible with LG batteries uh, for this one. And our off-grid options are, of course, um, you know, any third-party battery would work. Uh, but for this grid tied MIN inverter, uh, you can select the grid code here, uh, depending on where you are. You can see which EMS mode we're in, and uh, that can actually be changed on a different screen, but currently we're on load first. Here you can set that pre-PTO mode if you want to. So if we go back, uh, you can actually set the EMS modes right there. Of course, maximum SOC, minimum SOC, uh, and discharge power ratio, if you want to, say, maximize the life of the battery, those can, of course, be changed. And then you can finally see real-time data. And it'll show that we are of course, connected to the grid right now. Uh, our SOC for our battery is 100%. We're fully charged up, uh, getting power from the grid. And we actually have PV on the roof here as well. Uh, 62, uh, well, not producing much at the moment. 60 watts coming in uh, and nothing going to a load. But that's it. That's essentially the commissioning process. Uh, and you can go through the detailed settings if you want uh, as an advanced user on the Shine tools. But that's really it. There, there aren't many advanced settings uh, you'd usually need. Uh, you can turn on pre-PTO mode and then be ready to commission when you get approval from the regulators. So that's really it. And uh, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up here and move on to a bit of a Q&A section. I know I saw some questions in the chat. Um, possibly Ryan or Furman has had a chance to look those over and answer them. Uh, both Ryan and Furman uh, will go into the Q&A here. How do you guys want to get started with that? Yeah, certainly. Uh, one thing I did want to call out, uh, just because I thought of it after, at the end when you were speaking, uh, when I did mention the partial home backup and the whole home backup for the MIN series product, one thing I would want to call out is we do have two min models, depending on whether you're using sort of a traditional dumb ATS, if you were, uh, the traditional ATS product uh, versus the SYN. You would use a V2 if you're doing a partial home backup with an ATS, but if you are looking to use the SYN product, it would require a V3 inverter. So that is something I did want to call out for the installers in their application. Again, we're happy to review that with any installer before they make their purchase, as I'm sure Renvu would be as well. Uh, but I do just want to make that known just so there's not any trouble in the field for customers. Yeah, good point. So that was uh, our V3 MIN inverter there and the SYN full 200 amp backup for whole home. Um, yeah, uh, maybe Furman, do you want to go through some of the Q&A? It looks like uh, you may have answered some of these already. Uh, do you want to just speak through a couple of those questions? Sure, yeah. Uh, so basically, I found a few interesting questions here. The first one being the if load is minimal and the battery is significantly depleted, will it send more charge more charge to the battery? So that depends. Basically, uh, I have provided an answer here that we have different operating modes for the inverter that control the energy flow of the PV power to the other uh, sources, the battery or the the loads. So it controls the, the energy flow in different ways depending on the user's needs and depending on which operating mode you choose. So we basically can choose between either charging the battery at full capacity or exporting the, uh, the energy to the load or to the grid at full capacity, charging the 
uh, batteries from solar energy only or uh, using the power for self-consumption only. So yeah, those are the different modes we have. Uh, there is a question here that says the, that's about the best robot system for a completely off-grid home system. So that depends. Um, so basically all the inverters that we presented today have the ability to operate in a fully off-grid environment and set up. Uh, but I would um, suggest the S SPF as the more, most affordable options. Uh, and also depending on, on what type of loads you have for your case, uh, whether you want to use the generator as as a backup source only, if your battery is deplete, or if you want to use it as your main source of power, right? Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out to. I provided my email address there, so I'll be able to assist if you can if you provide more details of that. Um, another question is related to the systems that are certified to UL ninety five forty. So for the mini inverter, um, we have the APX, ARO, and LG batteries. And for the SPH, we have the ALP. And currently, we're working well. We don't actually have the UL9540 yet for the ALP. Uh, that will come available soon in the next few weeks. And then we're working also with other battery manufacturers like Simplify, Endure, and Fortress Power um, um, to get those ready if possible. Yeah, and those those will come in Q3, Q4 this year. Um, that's about it uh, for the questions regarding the availability of product here. I will, um, I provided a contact, contact info or contact email to our sales team. And I believe that's that's all. Yeah, that's all on my side. For some of the product availability questions, uh, maybe Erez can jump back in and say uh, what you guys currently have in stock in the warehouse. What are your planned orders? Um, you know, things like that. I think that'd be a general uh, great way to wrap up. So installers and end users can possibly come by the warehouse, get some products. Thank you. Um, so we will share with uh, in the follow-up uh, email uh, what we carry and what we have. Um, obviously, we can uh, also order. Uh, if we don't have it in the warehouse, we can certainly order it uh, and drop ship anything that is needed um, and is available uh, from Grow One. Um, one question that I saw there, let me share my screen real quick and I'll, I'll answer the first question. Um, okay. So, Someone asked, what if I have a module that is not showing up in your list of modules on your quote tool? Uh, what you will do on the first step, instead of having the full system checkbox, you will uncheck it and uncheck the solar panels here. Go to the next page and it will allow you, instead of selecting the modules from our list, to put your own uh, module. So for example, Let's say you want to put uh, Canadian solar uh, 550 watt. You can just uh, simply put it, plug in here uh, the relevant information. Uh, this and the dimensions of the module. And then once you do that, our system will take that into account when calculating the uh, the power uh, or the limitations of the inverters or uh, measuring or the racking that you're selecting here uh, with your uh, uh, with your sketch and uh, arrays. So this is the first question there that I wanted to answer. Um, yeah, other than that, um, just uh, thank you very much, uh, Grow a team for uh, for this extended uh, uh, webinar. Um, you can also email our sales team with any questions at info at .com for more information or questions if you have or pricing. As I mentioned before, this webinar is being recorded, and we'll send you a link in follow up email in the next few days with all the information about the products and uh, the recordings um, 
that's it. Have a great <laughs> week, everybody else. Um, and see you, see you soon. Yeah, thank you guys very much. Big thank you from GrowWatt. Thanks to Erez and Peyton over at Renvu. And uh, we look forward to sharing our solutions uh, throughout the future. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Thank you guys. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye, man.